All right, class, welcome back uh, to Bioinformatics with R. Uh, I'm Dr. VDB. Uh, you probably know by now, I don't know why I'm introducing myself four lectures in. Uh, Isaac's assured me this is going to go a lot smoother than the last one. Uh, today we're going to be talking a bit about lists and data frames. Um, so let's hop into it. Okay, so first thing we're going to do here, let's kind of annotate our code and say this data frames. Um, these are much more uh, used in the bioinformatics uh, packages, at least to my experience. Uh, so this is a bit more important uh, than the matrices and arrays, uh, in my humble opinion. Um, some may argue that if you use a specific uh, package that asks for matrices or something. But, uh, so let's get started. So um, let's create a list and we're gonna stick with the biology theme here. We're gonna call this HSPA1A. So that's a heat shock protein um, and we're going to say that it's a list where the gene equals, or just gene, singular, equals, and then we're going to make it a uh, name, so HSPA1A. And then we're going to say amino uh, dot acids equals 641. And then we're going to say the number of nucleotides Nucleotides, there we go, equals 2,000, or no, 2,400, sorry. Okay, so let's run this. And so as you can see up here, uh, we have a new data set, uh, a list of three er um, variables. If we are to then print uh, HSPA1A, Make sure it's capitalized because our hates when we mix up cases. We see that we have uh, our three variables uh, HSPA1A, 641, uh, and 2400, and you can see that we have labels for them. So when we said gene equals uh, HSPA1A, uh, that meant our label was gene, and then our variable was HSPA1A. Uh, our second input was amino acids and that variable is 641 etc um, so now if we were to call um, hspa 1a which is our variable and put a dollar sign that means we're going to select uh, from one category uh, from it so hspa 1a amino acids and we run that, we just pull what is stored under amino acids. Um, if we were to do um, the same thing, but with, see, once you hit the dollar sign, it pulls all your options up here, right? So we'll say nucleotides. If we were to pull that, it should pull out our 2400 uh, that we had before. So now, let's say, um, let's make something a little more complex, a data frame instead of a list. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable called genes. And we're gonna make it a collection of um, HSPA4, HSPA5, which are, these are all heat shock proteins, uh, HSPA8, HSPA9, HSPA1A, that was what we called earlier, and HSPA1B. Oops, see how it's white? It's because I didn't put it in parentheses, so it thinks it's some sort of uh, factor or number instead of a, a name. Um, so make sure you put parentheses around it. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is make a variable called uh, nucleotides. as well and it's got to have the same number uh, for this example as we had entries into gene 
Uh, so we're going to do uh, five, four, five, three, seven. Oops, put that eight in there. Oops, and there, since these are numbers, uh, we don't need to put uh, parentheses around them. We want them to be numbers. Um, six, four, nine, one, four, six, four, eight, uh, two, one, six, four, six, 2400, and then 2517. And these are the actual uh, nucleotide lengths of these genes. Um, not, that's why I'm kind of being careful as to what I type, just to be accurate. Um, same thing with the amino acids here that we're going to create. Uh, this is a collection. We have 840, 654, uh, 493, 679, 641, and 641. Okay, so now I'm going to run these three lines. And you can see down the console it ran. If we look over to the right here, we should see that we have nucleotides, uh, amino acids, and genes. Right? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, go up to our, uh, our chunk here. We're going to do HSPs. This is going to be the name of our data frame. And we're going to say data frame. That is the function. And we're going to say gene nucleotide or nucleotides. Make sure if it's plural, you write that right. And then, oops, amino acids. Oops, see, I spelled this wrong. Nemo. That's why it wasn't giving me the answer. So if you have to go back and change something like this, make sure that you rerun that line. Um, so then when I have it down here, uh, it's in the environment or it's, it's been documented, run by the console. So I ran this line here, uh, HSPs, to make a data frame that includes the gene variable, which as you, if you highlight it, you see it highlights it up here. And that's our names, the nucleotides, I highlight it, it shows me that that's been called right there. It'll actually show you every instance that it's been called. Um, but then also the amino acids, which is this. So now uh, let's look at, um, let's print out HSPs and see what happens. So you can see this is kind of like an Excel spreadsheet, right? And so uh, we have our gene, which is our uh, column header, nucleotides, amino acids, and then HSPA4, which is our first entry. 54537, which is the first entry for nucleotides, and 840, which is the first entry for amino acids. So we'll always fill in order. So you have to make sure that the order that you make genes um, corresponds with the order for nucleotides, corresponds with the number for 840, because it, it just puts them according to their entry um, rank, right? So uh, what else can we do here? Um, so just like uh, when we did our lists earlier, we can call a specific column by using the dollar sign. So if we have a data frame and we're like, what is the list of all the genes that are in this data frame? Let's run it and it'll give you a list of all the genes. Uh, similarly, um, you could do nucleotides, run that, and we have the list of all the nucleotides. Uh, I've done a bad habit here um, and I have not, Take my code, so I'm going to go back and do that. So I'll say, um, let's pull out just the amino acids, and then let's uh, pull out just the nucleotides. Uh, let's create three lists and then combine them into a data frame. Let's pull out just the 
it's really important to do this, and I've been in a bad habit. Uh, everyone kind of gets into a bad habit of not doing that because what you're going to find is that if you don't annotate your code, it's going to make sense in the time, but then if you give your code to somebody else, um, because you'll be passing it around with other investigators or people in your lab or other doctors, etc., uh, if, if you're using this in the med field, um, or what I found from my experience is that I would uh, do an analysis and then like a year later get more data, want to rerun that analysis and go and look at my code and I'm like, what the heck am I doing? <laughs> like, what, what was I thinking writing it this way? And what does this do? What does that do? So important to, uh, to annotate your code. Okay, so we can pull the genes and the nucleotides uh, from this uh, list. Um, the other thing we can do is we can kind of uh, query the list. Um, so let's search for a specific uh, gene. So we would do HSPs, heat shock proteins, and then we're going to say uh, amino acids. Um, and then within the amino acids, we want so we're querying, sorry. We're gonna look, uh, search for a specific amino acid count. So we're gonna look in the column amino acids and we want the value or the variable entry, uh, that is, where the gene equals, so R's weird and if you want to find something that equals something, you have to use a double equal sign. I don't know the logic behind that, but it's just one of those weird mysteries of life, I guess. <laughs> Whoever wrote the code. Uh, so HSPA. Okay, so let's rehash what's happening here. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, first take that data frame of heat shock proteins that contains these three lists up here, right? Next it says we're looking for an amino acid, so only look at the amino acid columns, and from that amino acid column, only give me the value that is equal to the row, or the, uh, yeah, the row, HSPA8, right? So if we run this chunk of code, we get 493. So a nice thing about our studio that really, uh, makes it handy is with data frames what you can do so you can double click it and it'll open a new tab here right and this tab so your codes here your tab fruits here so this shows everything in the data frame which is really convenient so it kind of marries like the visual aesthetics of um, Excel and being able to like see your data because a lot of times people get hung up in um, using command line because they can't see what's going on like you store stuff it's just not there right it's gone but you can actually pull it up here so um, our query was our heat shock protein data set that we pulled up here look for the amino acid number the count right so we enter these numbers this count numbers where the gene is HSPA8 so if you look at HSPA8 and then the amino acid number we see that's 493 and so that should match what we printed out, right? Boom. So you might say to yourself, why would I write this code if I can just pull this up and look at it? Well, you have to think at it, of it from the context of when we do differential gene expression, for example. Um, we'll probably, to start, use one of my data sets um, from my Arabidopsis experiments. And in that experiment, you get roughly 23,000 genes, lines on an Excel spreadsheet that has genes and the expression and count values and things like that. So you can imagine, while it's easy to just go look here and say, okay, HSA or HSPA8 is 493 nucleotides. If you had to look through 23,000 lines to find where HSPA8 was, um, that could be a pain in the butt. And 
also, even if you use like Excel, Excel doesn't like to load that many uh, lines onto an Excel spreadsheet, right? And so uh, even like searching in that way can be a pain in the butt. So this is just an easy way to, uh, to query these large, large data sets that we're gonna be using. Um, and so uh, it's not that we are, you know, making what is, you might consider an easy task um, or difficult by writing code, but it has its utility when you're not able to pull up stuff. Especially if we get into like, if you get into Python and Gene um, uh, doing high performance computing or, or compute cloud computing to do these alignments because you need a lot more power than a typical desktop or laptop can give you. Uh, if you're to query those, you're just remoting in with a command line. And so there's no way to actually pull up an Excel spreadsheet. They don't have that type of software on there. So you have to query these databases that way. So that's it for uh, data frames and lists. Um, you'll be quite familiar with these by the end of the course. Uh, they're kind of the main, uh, I'd argue, the main data structures for doing um, bioinformatics with R. So they're very valuable, very useful. Um, and uh, keep it short and simple. Hope to see you in the next one.